This tutorial will teach you how to design this chest of drawers using skeleton design method. First of all, let's create a new part. Now we need to create a range box for a chest of drawers. For that I will use a box primitive. To display a menu of primitives, I need to right click on an empty space in the ribbon and choose primitives from show panels menu item. Now I can draw the box. The box is based on a rectangular sketch, so let's draw it on XY plane. Now let's set this plane as a top view using right click on a view coupe. Then I start to draw a rectangle on the center of the coordinate system. I will zoom out a little bit. And as you can see, now there is two input fields used to set the size of the rectangle. For this purpose I will use two variables, length and depth. For the length I will assign a value of 1200. Now I can move to the next input field using a top key. Depth will be equal to 400. Now I need to press enter. Here we can set the height of the box. And now we can click on the home sign on the view group to see the entire model. Let's take a look at the final result again. As you can see from a top view, it has a trapezoidal extraction. Accordingly, we need to change the shape of our range box. To do this, I need to draw the sketch of the trapeze on the top surface. Once a contour of the top surface is projected on a sketch, I need to draw two lines to have the close profile of the trapeze. Now we need to set the dimensions between the breakpoint and the vertical line on the left. This distance is equal to one third of the total length. We already set the length parameter, so now I can read it from the list and divide it by 3. Use Ctrl C to copy this formula, we will use it in the future. Now I need to set the dimensions from the right side. I can simply pick already existing dimension on a sketch. There is still one dimension missing, so we need to place the dimension between those two horizontal lines. Now we can finish the sketch to go back to 3D and let's create another extrusion. I need to pick this close profile to create a cutout for all the length. I simply need to change and extend. And as you can see, Inventor automatically switched to the Cut option. Let's modify the name of this base solid. I will name it like Chest of Drawers. Now it's time to use the Dress-Up function to make panels. First of all, I need to select the skeleton body. Then I need to select the faces that need to be covered with the panels. In this case, it will be more convenient to select all the faces. Now, holding the Ctrl key, I can remove the selection from some facade panels and from the top panel. Now I can set the thickness of the board and let's apply the changes. Now we can define a different thickness for the desktop. As you can see, now we have a lot of solid bodies automatically named in regard with the name of the first solid. Now we can turn off the visibility of the skeleton to see only the panels. Now we see only the panels, however they still need to be trimmed in regard with the design intent. To trim the panel I will use trim function. 
First of all, I need to select the panels that will be trimmed. Then, I need to select bounding panels. I can apply the changes. And you see the results. Now we need to trim some more panels. So now we have the door panel which doesn't fit, so we need to uh, trim the side panel. Let's change the visual style. As you can see, now we have nicely connected panels. We can go back to the shaded view. As you can see, there are still more adjustments needed. For instance, there is no spacing between the door panel and a side. We can fix this situation using direct modification. To do this, we can temporarily disable the visibility of the door panel. And now let's use the direct modification to move this edge. The distance will be minus 2. Now we can make the door panel visible again. And as you can see, there is a spacing. But there is still no spacing between the top and the bottom panels. So let's create another sketch on the door panel. As you can see, the sketch of the door has been automatically projected. We need to select this sketch using the rectangular selection. And now let's set this sketch as a construction geometry. Now we can do an offset. Let's finish the sketch, create another extrusion. In this case, I will simply use intersect option and the extent will be through all the length. What it does, it keeps only the geometry which is inside of the working contour. As you can see, now we have nicely adjusted door panel. Now we need to create separators. So we need to go back to dress up and in this case, I will choose Clone option. Now I need to select the panels to clone. You remember, we already copied an offset. So it's time to use Ctrl V to pass this value. As you can see, some adjustments still needed. We need to reduce an offset. So we can apply the changes and do the same for another panel. As you can see now, we have the separators and it's time to draw some shelf in between. To make a shelf, I will use the work plane. As you can see, the work plane can be made using the reference plane and center point on edge. Now I can draw the sketch. The sketch is placed inside of the model. To see what's happening inside of the model, I will use slice graphics option. Now we need to project some geometry using project geometry function. In this case, I will project all cut edges. Now we need to draw a diagonal line.
This line should be parallel with this edge. So now we can set all the geometry that we don't need as a construction. First of all, I need to click Escape to disable Constraint option. Now I can use Rectangular Selection to mark all the geometry. And now I can set it as a construction. Now I will only pick the geometry that I need. Using another Rectangular Selection, I can select all the lines that I need to use, except the, fr the front edge. Now I can set this line as a working line. The last thing I need to do is just draw the line here. Once it's done, we have fully constrained sketch. You can go back to 3D to create another extrusion. In this case, I will use the same board of 80mm thickness. Extrusion will be symmetric, and this will be the new solid. Extrusion will be symmetric, and the result of this operation, and the result of this operation will generate a new solid. Now we can change the name of this solid in regard of already created. The last thing we need to do <coughs> now we can turn off the visibility of the work plane. The last thing we need to do is just set some reference point for the drawer. Let's create another work plane as an offset from the bottom surface. It will be offsetted by 3 mm. Now I will use the point to make some work points on the intersection with those vertical edges and the work plane. Now we can turn off the visibility of the work plane. As you can see, now we have three work points. Those work po points will be used as a reference to place the drawer. Now we can go to the Manage to make components. Before doing this, we need to save the file. Let's create a new folder and name it Learning Path Step 1. And let's set the name for the main part. <clears throat> now we can pick the solids to make the components. Now we need to set the output folder. As you can see, the name of the components is the same as the name of the solids. Now we are in assembly environment. To see the model in normal orientation, we need to click on the home sign in the view group. There are some minor adjustments needed. Using a view group, we can set current view as front. Then, using view, Visual style, we can turn on the visibility of the edges. Now it's time to derive those work points we have just created. Using double click 
on the bottom panel, we can adjust derived parts. In this case, we need to additionally add some working geometry. We can go back to the model. Now we can measure the distance between the point and the top surface. Let's copy this value. Now we can go to the assembly, pattern, I copy. Here we can place some comp components from the prototype library. In this case, I will use the drawers. We need to place the drawer in the assembly. We need to use some reference points. Now, we need to set a free space. Just paste the value you have copied before. And also, we need to set the quantity of the drawers. Let's say that there will be two of them. Now we need to make the components. Let's turn off the visibility of the side panel. As you can see, the drawer also contains some hardware elements. We can turn off the visibility of the work planes by holding Alt and closing brackets. Now let's copy this drawer and place one more instance. We can place it using constraints. Now the sides. And now we can use made constraint to set the gap between those two. There will be 3 millimeters. Now we can make the side panel visible back again. And that's the final result of the first step.